Hi friends, today we're going to talk about some arcs. In today's recently read arcs video, it's not technically recently read arcs, it's more recently DNF'd arcs. Uh, I went through a whole heck a ton of books at the end of May, uh, a lot of arcs specifically, and I DNF'd I think seven. So we're going to talk about those today, um, what they were, what they're about, why I DNF'd them. Let's get started. The first of which is The Legend of Lilith by Hilary Oliver. This is set in a non-modern fantasy world. So essentially the world that it's in feels like our past, you know, prior to technology, but it is a fantasy world. Um, it is a chosen one storyline. It is a young girl um, and her parents. I think one of them is going off into battle. Not really 100% sure. Maybe it's got a little bit of a Mulan retelling in it. Not sure. Uh, I DNF'd this at 10%. So I felt like this was just your basic story from 2005 about a chosen one like we've all read them and it did not feel like it was going to be anything more than that and I can vibe with a 2005 chosen one storyline because you know I was around in 2005 and I read a lot of those but for me the sentences in this were so wordy that I often forgot what the beginning of the sentence was by the time I got to the end. They were just very long like paragraph length sentences and I was like focused so much on like trying to figure out what the author was saying that by the time I got to the end it was like I had read nothing. So at 10% I felt like I should have known more than I did and I just decided to bounce. I then DNF'd Lineage by C. Vonzale Lewis. This is a fantasy world where a girl takes a job she doesn't want to prove she doesn't need her family? Question mark. Uh, so essentially this is, I believe if I remember when I read this originally, or when I read the synopsis originally, the girl has like left her family because they are involved in some kind of magic that she doesn't like and unfortunately she doesn't have like the, a job or the means to take care of herself and so she has to take a job in a place she doesn't really want to take a job in order to prove that she doesn't need her family's help. I DNF'd this at 15%. I thought that this was going to be a book that I loved but I hated the main character. Um, it just was so unbelievable to me. There were so many red flags about this job that she was taking in the first 15% that it made the plot completely unbelievable. I mean, literally, she goes to this job position and it it just feels weird to her. It feels off. She doesn't feel like it's a good place to be. And, but she's like, well, but I need a job because I have to take care of myself. Like, girl, McDonald's is hiring, okay? I need a job, I need to take care of myself, I need money so I don't have to depend on my family. And she goes in and they sit her down with this guy, I think it was a guy, I think so, um, basically to like learn the job after she had talked to somebody and again red flag after red flag after red flag. But they sit her down with this guy to like kind of learn the job and he's like don't take this job, don't work here. Like he's whispering it to her like and saying things between the lines like it is straight up like some kind of like story where the people are forced to work there and they all want out and they're like trying to tell you don't take the job because this is going to happen to you and you're going to be forced to be here and she's just like I don't care about all these red flags I need a job and I'm like bitch Walmart like so yeah I DNF that. Uh, then we had Bad Luck Bridesmaid by Allison Rose Greenberg. This is about a woman who doesn't believe in marriage and is a zero for three as a bridesmaid and is determined to get her best friend down the aisle. But gasp, her ex-boyfriend is there. How can she deal? So essentially our main character has been a bridesmaid in three weddings and of those three weddings none of the brides have actually gone through with the marriage. I DNF'd this at 40% and a large part of that was because of my issues with the main character. The book itself wasn't terrible. Um, 
but I, I have a lot of issues with the main character. Um, first off, a lot of, I made it to 40% and we had just gotten to present day. So that first 40% is learning about like her, her history, um, the three weddings that didn't happen and why they didn't happen. And then you get to like her relationship with this absolutely perfect guy. He's got money. He's handsome. He's, you know, like a friend of her or the cousin of her best friend and like, you know, all this, that and the other. And like, he's, he's so perfect for her and he's so wonderful, but she never fucking tells him what she wants. And so he proposes to her and she turns him down and he's like, peace motherfucker. And he leaves. So and then she has to go to his cousin who is her best friend's wedding and he's there because it's his cousin and she has to figure out how to deal with it. So despite claiming to be a feminist, she has some really shitty things to say about other women. I could not handle the way that she spoke about other women. Um, it was not for me. It was not a fun time. I was not having this like very overtly like pessimist woman who was like, I am a feminist, but also all of these women who have decided that they want to like be a slave to their man are trash and garbage and they're this and they're that and the other. And I'm like, girl, part of being a feminist is allowing other women to make their own choices and what's right for them and what's right for their lifestyle. You don't get to decide what everybody else gets to live. That's not being a feminist. That's like being a dictator. So like, let's not like, let's let other women be the women they want to be and you be the woman you want to be. That's what being a feminist is. I just did not vibe with this main character. I also, after having read some spoiler reviews for how this ended, so fucking happy I did not finish this book. I, if you are reading this book, if it's Bad Luck Bridesmaid, if you're reading it and you're like, hmm, I don't know if I should finish this, please read the spoilers. Please read the spoilers because A, this is not a fucking romance. Okay. Okay. Um, it's sold as a romance, but she not. So I mean, I guess she maybe, maybe, but I'm going to say no. We then have This May End Badly by Samantha Markham. This is about a senior girl at an all girls school that learns that the centuries long rivalry with the boys school across the street is at jeopardy because the schools announced that they are going to merge. I DNF'd this at 10%. I was very annoyed with this main character within like the first, I think I said the first page in my notes. I think I was like the very first page, this main character pisses me off. Clearly we can see that my issue with all of these books have been the main character. I mean, a large part of my issue with them has been the main character. So clearly main characters are it for me right now. I want nothing to do with this main character. She is just way too fucking much and just no thank you. And for me, like there was a lot of the backstory that just did not make sense. So these kids from these two schools, they're across the street from each other, but they're, they, hate each other and like they've all staked out like their own businesses in the town but they're not allowed to spend any time with each other they're not really allowed out of school grounds so how do they have they staked out like individual places i don't know um they have each other's phone numbers they know like about each other's families their histories like the main character and the love interest have like she knows all of his relatives and like the backstory and how they're like this super uppity rich family and she knows like all of his cousins and like which ones are the attractive ones and which ones are stupid and like how do you know the whole villain backstory of these people that you're supposedly not supposed to talk to and why do you have their phone number i just i mean i grasp the concept of the teenagers but like i don't know the whole thing was a giant mess that I didn't want to deal with. So I bounced. We then have Wicked As You Wish by Ren Chepeco. I DNF'd this at 20%. Here's my thing. First off, I really like Chepeco's writing style. Um, I've read The Girl From The Well, which I loved. And I liked what Chepeco was going for here. It is multi-generational fighters. Um, so you have like the elderly are fighting down to the teenagers are fighting. They are generations of people who came from this suppressed magic kingdom. They are protecting the royal of this kingdom, the, the heir of the kingdom. And they're living in a place where they're not supposed to be using magic. And 
And Tahala, who was our main character, her family was spectacular. Like there was some some things going on in the backstory of her parents that you know was going to play a larger part later on. And they followed like her mother's Filipino heritage, which was fantastic. Um, always love reading things about Filipino heritage because I am very teeny tiny percentage Filipino. And you know, uh, as a white girl, I get all of the white girl heritage and all of the white girl history, but I don't get any of the Filipino history. So I love reading that in books and learning more about that. And I was liking the characters. For me, what did not work and why I will continue to pick up more of Chepeco's work in the future, even though I didn't after this, uh, I did not like the fairy tale blending, um, but more so the mentioning of things. So they would talk about artifacts, if you will, from our fairy tales. So I'm smart enough to figure out that the spinning needle that puts you to sleep is from Sleeping Beauty. I don't need it to be called the Sleeping Beauty Needle. It felt too overworked. It felt like I was being beaten over the head with like the references. This poison apple is the Snow White poison apple. Like no shit, that's the story that the poison apple's from. I don't need you to tell me that. Le legitimately though, the poison needle from Sleeping Beauty, that's an actual reference, the Sleeping Beauty Needle is an actual reference from the book. I didn't I didn't need that. Was that the first book or the second book in the series? I don't know. I tried to read the first book. I technically had an arc of the second book, but I didn't know it was the second book in a series. Um, so I technically DNF'd the first book, not the second book, which what my arc was. But that is completely outside of the point. Okay. And then we have another similar story uh, of me not knowing which book is which book. Uh, the Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White. I had an arc of the third book. I had previously read the first book, but I was reading the second book. And that is what I DNF'd. And I DNF'd that at 15%. The story's about some kind of a woman who takes over the spot of Guinevere, like Guinevere is dead, and Merlin puts her in place to take Guinevere's spot to marry Arthur for her to help protect Arthur. Um, and then like a whole King Arthur retelling thing. Um, the first book was good. I liked the first book. There were a lot of questionable things about the first book, but I did like it and I wanted to see where things went. So I picked up the second book when I got the arc of the third book. I did not like the second book at all. Um, again, I DNF'd at 15%, so I hadn't read very much, but it was, it was like it was written by a completely different author for me. And Kirsten White for me is hit or miss and it's usually a miss. Some of her stuff I like but most of it I really don't. Um, this book was good but it just dragged on and on and on and I only read 15%. Um, I read some spoilers for how the last book ends and I'm so fucking glad that I quit. Uh, had I finished that series I would have been royally pissed. So I'm glad that I quit where I did and um, have no interest in the future to pick up another Kirsten White really. Um, I was enjoying her Slayer series um, and I may pick up the next book in that um, which I think is Chosen. I think I own it somewhere. She be here somewhere. Um, I may pick up that but I don't think I'm gonna start any new series of hers or any yeah so I'm very cautious about Kirsten White moving forward. So those were the six books that I DNF'd. Arcs, obviously, I had opinions. Uh, if you have read any of these and you have would like to discuss them or if you haven't read them and you want to know more or have more questions, comment section down below. Happy to talk about them with you. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye! My heart is so hurt.